Hey, shalom, friends, brothers, sisters. Uh, today I want to talk about the wisdom of Solomon uh, in Scripture. I'm just going to give you a few of them, but, you know, he prayed for wisdom. And he got what he what he prayed for. So I'm going to read some scriptures to you, illustrate some of the, you know, feats and the wisdom of Solomon. And let's go to uh, 2 Chronicles 1, chapter 1. Verse 7 through 13, and it's, it reads, And that night did Elohim appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto Elohim, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now of Yahweh Elohim, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I might go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this thy people that is so great? And Elohim said unto Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked for riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked for wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou might mayest judge my people over who I have made thee a king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none other kings have had that have been before, that neither shall there any after thee have the like. Then Solomon came from his journey to the high place that was Gibeon and Jerusalem from before the tabernacle of the congregation and reigned over Israel. So Solomon didn't ask for riches, long life, or anything like that, but it was impressed and it touched Yahweh, it touched Yahweh's heart so much that not only did he grab, grant him the wisdom and knowledge, he said, you're going to have wealth, you're going to have a, a fruitful life, you're going, to have, you're going to have blessings like nobody's ever had before. And the riches, of course, the riches here, you know, you could read, uh, you know, in chapter 1, 14, read on down. You could read a little bit about, you know, the wealth that, you know, Yahweh bestowed onto him. Um, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to skip back to uh, First Kings. First Kings here. Oops. First, it'd be First Kings 4, 29 through 34. 29 through 34, and it reads, <clears throat> Neelam gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceedingly much and largeness of the heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And, Solomon, and Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt, for he was wiser than all men that Ethan and Ezraite and Heman and Chalcol and Darda, the sons of Mahol, and his fame was in all nations around about. So everybody knew about knew about him. They heard about his vast wisdom and knowledge and things. And he spoke three thousand proverbs. His songs were a thousand and five. And he spoke of trees from the cedar tree that is Lebanon, even unto the hyssop. The springeth out, and of the wall he spoke also of beasts, and the fowls, and the creeping things, and the fishes. And there came of all the people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. So, in a sense, you know, he was granted wisdom. You know, he's granted wisdom from Yahweh, but he's more like kind of like a botanist and scientist and everything else. He was a jack of all trades when it comes to knowledge in certain fields. But Yahweh gave it to him. He gave him the, also the capability of learning a lot, you know, and that's uh, that does say say quite a bit. So let's, I'm gonna jump back to uh, Second Chronicles now. Interesting story. It'd be uh, chapter nine, Second Chronicles chapter nine. Let's get there. Chapter nine, and it will be. Uh, one through six. This is the Queen of Sheba. 
And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon's with hard questions at Jerusalem, with a very great company and camels that bear spices and gold and abundance and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all things that were in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions, and there was nothing hid from Solomon which he told her not. And when the Queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon in the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, their cupbearers also, their apparel, and his ascent by which he went up to the house of Yahweh, there was no more spirit in her. She was breathtaking. She was like, her. she was numb. She couldn't, she, she couldn't believe it. Her jaws probably dropped. <laughs> she, I mean, <laughs> and she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in thy own la uh, land, in, in thine acts, and in thy wisdom. Howbeit I believe not their words until I came, and my eyes had seen it. And behold, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me, for how exceedest the fame which I heard. So she heard about it, but she had to go and see for herself. She might have had some doubts about it. She gave him some hard questions to try to test him, but he passed that test, you know. And she was, she was elated by by meeting him and seeing seeing his nation and kingdom and everything and servants and everything. Um, so let's uh, let's go back to uh, First Kings again. I'll go back to uh try to go back to uh chapter three fifteen seeds chapter three and three fifteen through twenty eight and Solomon awoke and behold it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant Yahweh and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Then came two, two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, Oh, my sovereign, I, I and this woman dwelt in one house and I was delivered a child with her in the house. And it came to pass on the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. This woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. Sudden infant death syndrome. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me. And thy handmaid slept and laid it on her bosom and laid her dead child on my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. When I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did hear, that I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is your son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. Then said the king, The one saith, This is my son that liveth, and the son of the dead. And the other saith, Nay, but my thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, said Bring me the sword. And they brought the sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and half to the other. Then spoke the woman whose the living child was unto the king for her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, Oh, my sovereign, give her the living child, and in no way, no way slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor hers, but divide it. Then the king's, king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no way slay it. She is the mother. And all, all Israel heard of the judgment which, which the king had judged, and they feared the king. For they saw that the wisdom of Elohim was in him to do judgment. So, 
So Yahweh, by instilling wisdom onto Solomon, Solomon probably had other, you know, he definitely had more other cases to judge like that, but his wisdom exceeded that of any other man except Yeshua, of course. But um, that was, them are perfect examples and just a little recap of his wisdom, how he got it, you know, some of his exploits, what others said about him, like the Queen of Sheba, you know, he was exceedingly rich and it was one of the, the probably the highest point in, in the kingdom of Israel's history before they went down divided and then the two nations fought and they were taken away enslaved by the Assyrians and the Babylons. But he was, you know, Solomon, of course, in his old age, you know, he turned from Yahweh, you know, and offered up burnt offerings to with his pagan wives who led him astray. And, but that was the glory of Israel, the United Kingdom of Israel, the 12 tribes. So I just wanted to share that with you because it's very, you know, inspiring to me, you know, to read that and everything. So with that said and done, I thank you again. Please like my video and hit the notification bells and comment and subscribe. You know, do your, you know, study your scriptures. These are very interesting stories. Sure, they could be a little entertaining, but you could learn from them. You can maintain your faith and your morals. And I always learn something from scripture here. I always learn something new or if something's in my life. You know, I might have a question for. I might open open scriptures and just read from a certain book and seems like the answer is there. I don't know. It's just inspired. It's like like Providence. I can't explain it, but I go with it. I enjoy it and I'm thankful. So with that said and done, peace out, shalom, till we meet again.